So good morning again to all of you who tuned in on my personal page when I did this wrong earlier. I apologize. If you already listened to me this morning, just go do something else. <laughs> But um, I couldn't figure out why I had like five people listening instead of our usual hundreds. And uh, yeah, I was on my personal page and not on this page. So yeah, it is what it is. Anyway, so the Instagram folks already got this and a few people were on my personal page. Uh, but I found this great study. It was actually posted uh, in somebody's feed on Facebook. Um, a couple weeks ago, and so it took me down a rabbit hole and doing some research, and um, it was really interesting what I found. Um, so there's a study, and this came out in 2019, that showed DNA evidence shows the link between gingivitis and Alzheimer's. So I'm talking about this because we're finishing up our dental health month, and um, I'm hoping that everyone is sticking with their daily dental care, and hopefully we've developed it into a habit by uh, taking care of that every day this month. Um, and so I found these great studies. They're human studies, but uh, we it's really hard to determine Alzheimer's disease or cognitive dysfunction in our pets like it is for people. I mean, clearly, if your mom doesn't remember your name anymore or what day of the week it is or where she's living, we can say, okay, there's cognitive decline. But for our pets, they don't have to read the newspaper. They don't have to carry on conversations. They literally have to find the food bowl, the bed, and the back door to go outside. And um, when they start having changes in their behaviors in old age, uh, then we start asking ourselves the question, is this a behavior change because their brain isn't working right? Or is this a behavior change because they're painful and can't get in and out of the litter box or can't go up and down the stairs to get to the litter box or can't go up and down the stairs to get in and out of the house or getting up out of their bed is just too much effort and, and work. So, you know, we're just going to go where we are. Um, so uh, it can be a little more difficult to do cognitive function test on our pets. Um, but if we look at these studies uh, in human medicine, I think a lot of it can be extrapolated and some of these things have been looked at in pets, but it's just a little more difficult to set up these studies. Um, so this is a study that showed DNA evidence shows that gingivitis plays a substantial role in increasing Alzheimer's disease. Uh, you don't only avoid holes in your teeth by keeping good oral hygiene. Researchers at the University of Bergen have discovered a clear connection between gum disease and Alzheimer's disease. Uh, they determined that gingivitis plays a decisive role in whether a person develops Alzheimer's or not. They discovered DNA-based proof that the bacteria causing gingivitis can move from the mouth to the brain. Um, the uh, bacteria produces a protein that destroys nerve cells in the brain, which in turn leads to loss of memory and ultimately Alzheimer's. They point out that the bacteria is not causing Alzheimer's alone, but the presence of the bacteria raises the risk for developing the disease substantially and are also implicated in more rapid progression of the disease. Um, so by brushing your teeth and flossing, that can actually help you prevent uh, uh, the development of Alzheimer's disease. Good news. Um, so they previously discovered that the bacteria causing gingivitis can move from the mouth to the brain where the harmful enzymes they excrete can destroy the nerve cells in the brain. Uh, for the first time, they have DNA evidence for the process from human brains. They examined 53 persons with Alzheimer's and discovered the enzyme in 96% of the cases. That's, that's pretty significant. Um, so it gives researchers a possible new approach for attacking Alzheimer's disease, and they're developing a drug that blocks the harmful uh, enzymes from the bacteria. So the bacteria is called Porphyromonas gingivalis. It's the keystone pathogen in chronic periodontitis in people, and it was identified in the brain of Alzheimer's disease patients. Toxic proteases from the bacterium called gingipanes were identified in the brain of Alzheimer's patients, and levels correlated with tau, which is a protein in the brain, and ubiquitin pathology. Oral P. gingivalis infection in mice resulted in brain colonization and increased production of alpha beta 1 42, which is a component of amyloid plaques. Uh, further, the gingipanes were neurotoxic in, in live people and also in cell cultures, exerting detrimental effects on tau, the brain protein uh, needed for normal neuronal function. 
To block the neurotoxicity, they designed and synthesized small molecule inhibitors targeting gingipanes. Gingipane inhibition reduced the bacterial load of an established P. gingivalis brain infection, blocked the AB1-42 production, reduced neuroinflammation, and rescued neurons in the brain. These data suggest that gingipane inhibitors could be valuable for treating P. gingivalis brain colonization and neurodegeneration in Alzheimer's disease. Pretty cool stuff. So I found some um, other studies linking gum disease to other problems in people. So we'll talk about those. Um, so the mechanisms behind periodontal disease are relatively well understood. Newer research shows that the health problem may play a role in the development of other conditions, including Alzheimer's disease, cancer, and respiratory disease. Um, okay, although spatially the gums are near the brain, one wouldn't normally associate dental complaints with neurologic conditions, but studies have shown a link between periodontal disease um, and brain problems. Risk of cognitive decline in older men increases as more teeth are lost. Periodontal disease and cavities, major reasons for tooth loss, are also related to cognitive decline. Researchers linked uh, periodontal disease with an increase of uh, buildup of beta amyloid in the brain, which is the neurologic hallmark of Alzheimer's. We don't necessarily see that in our do uh, dogs and cats. Um, and let's see, they found that the P. gingivalis infection boosts the production of beta amyloid and produces the gingipane, which is toxic to the tau, which is the protein. Um, uh, they have concluded that beta amyloid is produced in response to the pathogen. Um, okay, so, I'll, and then they talk about heart disease. Um, Although not everyone with heart disease has gum disease and not everyone with gum disease has heart disease, there is a definite correlation. Whether gum disease is an independent risk factor for heart disease is still being discussed, but there are some theories as to how the two might be related. Some say it could be uh, involve inflammation. Inflammation is a response to irrit irritants or pathogens. It's a protective mechanism, so not all inflammation is bad. But if it continues for an extended period of time, then it damages tissues and organs. It's possible that the inflammation in the gums sets off a cascade that ultimately sparks inflammation in the cardiovascular system. Alternatively, the link between heart and gum disease may be due to bacteria, which we've talked about. Bacteria in the gums can enter the blood supply and be propelled to distant destinations, including the heart, where they uh, can cause inflammation and damage. Uh, as evidence that this is possible, researchers have shown that P. gingivalis is the most commonly found bacterial species in the coronary artery, which is your heart artery. Um, there's also studies showing that uh, P. gingivalis, the porphyromonas in the mouth, can colonize the liver and cause liver abscesses and overall sepsis or septicemia in the body. Um, cancer risk increase... Um, on the surface, cancer and gum disease don't appear to have much in common, but a study in 2008 investigated tooth loss and cancer in 48,000 men. They conclude that there is indeed a link between gum disease and cancer. Uh, it was a small but significant increase in overall cancer risk. In another study involving more than 68,000 adults found a strong association between gum disease and overall cancer risk. Um, the link was also significant between gum disease and pancreatic cancer. Um, the researchers found that the, an enzyme produced by a type of bacteria commonly associated with gum disease, Treponema denticola, so this is a different one, commonly appears in certain tumors of the gastrointestinal system. Quite interesting. The enzyme, known as T. denticola chymotrypsin-like proteinase, helps the bacteria invade the tissue in gum disease and they found it also activated other enzymes that promote cancer cells as they advance into healthy tissue. Pretty cool stuff. Um, all right, and then a uh, study between gum disease and lung disease. The mouth is a shared gateway to the gums and lungs, and a study published in February 2019 investigated the records of 1,380 men. The authors found a significant relationship between chronic periodontitis and a reduction in respiratory function. The link remains significant even after controlling for confounding variables such as smoking. And once again, inflammation may be the link between the two conditions. Um, if the tubes in the, uh, you know, the airway uh, are inflamed, they become narrower and airflow is restricted. 
but aside from the probable role of inflammation, bacteria present in the mouth might also be breathed into the lungs, and once in the lungs, uh, the bacteria can trigger infections that directly lead to inflammation. A recent meta-analysis investigated potential links between gum disease and lung cancer. The authors concluded that patients with periodontal disease are at increased risk of developing lung cancer. Very interesting. Uh, they outlined some potential ways in which gum disease might increase lung cancer risk. For instance, breathing in bacteria such as the P. gingivalis from the mouth could cause infections. Similarly, enzymes produced during the course of gum disease might pass into the lungs and once there could help pathogens take root and colonize the lung tissue. The changes spark inflammation and over the long term, inflammation causes changes in cells that raise the likelihood of cancer developing. So if you remember when we talked about cancer in January, we talked about the fact that cancer is a disease of chronic inflammation. So um, I think these are really interesting studies. <coughs> it's really fun to kind of, well, for me to go down these wormholes sometimes and you know, one study leads to the next study and you just kind of keep going. Uh, but it just kind of brings home what we have talked about all month with dental health and how critical it is we're so good about taking care of our own dental health, but we really need to be on top of taking care of our pet's dental health as well. So happy Dental Health Month. We're almost to the end of it. Everybody keep up the good work. Keep using your dental drops, your brushing, uh, your water additives, whatever it is that you're doing to help your pets have significantly better um, oral hygiene. 